Hi, everybody. This is Stephanie Krubzak with the Pure Bent Living Podcast, Women in Wellness. Today, our guest is Cynthia Akey, owner at Synergy Wellness, LLC, certified yoga instructor, personal trainer, and wellness coach with 20 years of corporate experience in digital marketing and graphic design. Thanks so much for being here today. Thanks so much, Stephanie. It's great to be here. So let's get started with how did we meet? You know, it was really funny as even prior as we just got together on this, I don't remember how we met. Um, I know that uh, you asked me to be part of an entrepreneurial event. And more than that, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And I'm trying to remember the specific person that referred me to you, like by name, said you have to go to Cynthia at, you know, in vivo. And yeah. So, and then we worked together <laughs> for Women's Entrepreneurship Week. Yep. We did we a did wellness that workshop. So that was great. You did chair yoga. Yep. I still get feedback from that today, actually. People that's loved awesome. it. So, that's awesome. Because yeah. I'm trying to do more and more of that. So that's the direction I want to go. That's perfect. And we did host our second workshop the together, second one too. one in November. Yep. Yeah. First startup, Milwaukee Week uh, at Spaces. Was, yep. And that was great. Yeah, that was. So another workshop as well. So again, good feedback from that. So it's great Excellent. to have you here today. Thanks. So let's talk a little bit more about your business, Synergy Wellness. So Synergy Wellness came out of me going through my yoga teacher training program and just wanting to be able to uh, offer my services up to individuals and businesses, bringing yoga and fitness to them. So um, getting started with yoga uh, led me into personal training because I wanted to be able to, to be more knowledgeable and have a little bit a different fitness edge to some of what I was bringing to fitness and wellness. That's very cool. And you said you started your business back in like 2005? 2005 okay. is uh, when I started started the, the Synergy Wellness name. And it was funny because I was just trying to come up with a, a better name. And it, that one that one stuck because it, it was a nice broad, broad name to, to cover wherever I was going to, to take the business itself. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, because you do a combination of like fitness, training, plus Fit, yoga. Exactly, exactly. Doing a lot of different things. That's so. very cool. And you do a lot of chair yoga. What are some other yogas that, yoga types that you specialize in? Um, I'm My background comes from putting together a, a blend of different yoga styles. So working on more alignment-based um, a little bit of flow, just trying to connect breath with movement, um, as well as thinking more of restorative and self care. All of my, all of the classes that I teach, all of the, the the principles I like to bring are: Where are you today? What do we need to work on today? How can we bring a little bit more self love, self care, to your body in this moment? Like, how can we make this moment better so that the rest of your day is the best it can be? Mm-hmm. That's really great. And I know your circuit classes, you have it in vivo. I took one of them, was it a couple of months ago now? Yeah. And I think it was a really great combination of um, like the circuit training and yoga moves yeah, as well. Yeah. So I think for anybody wanting to try yoga, that's more kind of a fitness individual. A fitness like you're, aspect, right. Yeah, you're using... Um, yeah, we were just treating the, taking some sun salutations as a warm up, but yeah. adding other fitness elements into mm-hmm. them so that it's not just a straight sun salutation exactly yeah we were using some of those those fitness bands yep. and like a wobble board yeah um, some of those weighted balls so like a couple different things like different stations you had but I think it would be a really good place for somebody that wants to try yoga that's a little bit maybe afraid to do it to go to a full class to really try that absolutely because it's kind of like a small taste of it yeah absolutely so. and I know that um, my yoga for stiff bodies class gets mm-hmm. a lot of people interested because it's, I refer to it as more mm-hmm. focused stretching than, yes, we're doing some things that are yoga poses, but primarily we're trying to stretch the body in a ways that most people have just forgotten how to. So um, trying to bring a broad uh, spectrum to wellness at in vivo. Definitely. Yeah. And I know I've taken a vinyasa flow class. I've taken a restorative yoga mm-hmm. class. And I will have to say I love the view. Both uh, the gym and then the yoga studio room is overlooking the river. So I, I love it's, that actually. Yeah, and it's amazing. So we even yeah. um, the River Revitalization mm-hmm. Foundation is right next door and they have that little platform deck mm-hmm. that's between the two buildings and sometimes we'll take classes out there as well. Oh, that's if good If it's to know. not too hot, if it's not too buggy. <laughs> okay, perfect. So. We'll have to keep that in mind. <laughs> so what are some of the other initiatives that you're working on right now? 
to get people more aware of that they can move and also know that they can bring yoga of uh, regular yoga or chair mm-hmm. yoga into their workspaces or meetings or events. So um, definitely that's the direction that I'm trying trying to, to take it, um, getting in front of conferences and thinking about making little mindfulness uh, stations at events. Yeah, definitely. And I think a misconception about yoga maybe or chair yoga specifically is that you can do it in regular clothes. I was doing it in a dress at our event, which maybe is not the best idea, however, but right. there's moves you can do. You can easily, yeah. easily. And, and also trying to think, most people think, oh, chair yoga is this really slow thing that we're not going to really make a lot of change in the body, but you can do a lot with just a few simple stretches. Yeah. Um, taking it even even more so I'm excited for this this new one to to try to bring that to to more people to see that we can actually make a flow happen within chair yoga definitely yeah and it's like you said more of a stretch it's not like a full class you don't need a mat you can do it from your chair from your chair just take a break from work you know (laughs) maybe your shoulders are tight and you have a great you know little printout and you know kind of you can follow these images just pace that up by your desk I think that's super helpful yeah so yeah absolutely and can others like contact you too through synergy wellness you do any one-on-one I or? absolutely okay. I do one-on-ones everything from health coaching mm-hmm. to uh, personal training getting people started in yoga where people okay. are are curious to start yeah. yoga but are intimidated by actually going to a class and they want to mm-hmm. do some one-on-ones before they get ready to then go take some other classes elsewhere and or with me so um personal training. I, I work with a variety of people, every, every age, age, <laughs> shape and size, uh, just getting people to learn and understand their bodies a little bit better. And we also, there's always a little element, obviously of health coaching going in through the whole thing of, of behavioral change and, and how you can add more healthy habits into your everyday life. Yeah. Kind of like a whole package. And you know, we talked about healthy eating with food, things like that. Mm-hmm. So I know very plant-based and trying to be conscious of meal prep, things like that. So absolutely definitely yeah yeah and I know we mentioned a bit earlier too how we you know we've done two workshops together before and another goal of yours maybe is to get into a corporate setting to do more mm-hmm. workshops for employees so that's something that and I do currently to- teach and lead classes at uh, Rockwell Automation through Quad Med. so I'm already there on site mm-hmm. teaching classes um, both downtown and up in Mequon at Rockwell facilities okay. um, but looking to do to do more and uh, finding ways to, to, to bring that in. I've done a couple, uh, different chair yoga sessions specific to Rockwell hackathons. So they're doing, trying to solve a a 24 hour to code event. And, um, (laughs) it's, it's been fun to, to, to come in early in the morning when these people have been like hunched over (laughs) their computers working so hard. (laughs) They've been working so hard to, to try to solve the problem that's, uh, they've been given and just trying to open their minds a little bit more of like, like, oh, I can all, I could do this. Like, these are things I could actually do every day. Do you notice a big difference when you see them kind of all like drained and over time? Oh my gosh. You give them a session, yes, boost yes. of energy. They're just like, <laughs> oh, I'm ready to like, wow, I can't believe I could actually, you know, taking those few deep breaths really mm-hmm. made that difference in that uh, little back bend. So um, just really easy stretches for the chest. And don't they say that the effects of yoga last up to two hours after your class, like to give you either a boost of energy or calmness? Absolutely. So, absolutely. I mean, probably can, even longer than even, that. But. Right. Yeah. Depending on the movement. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. You're how much how much stimulation you're actually bringing to the body and where. Absolutely. That's really great. I know another area that you work in is you work with WWM. Do you want to talk more about that? Uh, sure. So uh I, I actually was an employee at WWM for many years, more on the marketing side. That's when I was doing all the graphic design and, and being in-house as a, a marketing specialist there. Um, but a friend of mine uh, said, hey, I think you'd be a really great contributor bringing some health and wellness tips to them. So uh, I've partnered with uh, my friend Lucian Young and together we're producing some videos and articles and on a monthly basis putting together something simple that people can listen and follow along with and try to add a little bit something different into their <laughs> their lives that they didn't even think about. So we've talked about uh, posture and breathing and uh, we'll be talking more about some more healthy habits to get started uh, for the new year. That's really cool. Yeah. 
And I know you talked a little bit about yoga certification before and chair yoga specifically. So is that something mm-hmm. you're, you're working on as well this it's, year? It's definitely something that uh, I would like to, to develop this year um, mm-hmm. and or working on a chair yoga book. Something something along those lines, being able to, to show that there's different ways to bring chair yoga to yourself, um, work or home or Um, those kind of things, but also just helping other yoga instructors and fitness professionals understand that they could be bringing this methodology to their clients, to anyone who needs to move because we all need to move. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, so definitely looking at how to, how to bring that forward and, and make it real. (laughs) No, I love that. And I think a book is a great idea, whether it's, you know, a physical book or even, you know, a PDF they can print off easily, but it can be effective as a way to kind of just read about it and then maybe try to apply it to your life as you go, or even as like a a type of, um, you know, a pamphlet or Mm -hmm. kind of like a a workbook where you write through as you go. And I know for the, the holidays this past year, I got my godson a yoga for teens book. Oh, nice. Just turned 15. So it's it's really cool to see there's a lot out there to help individuals there get is. started with it because it can help with stress, even bullying for kids, things like that. I mean, there's so many things that can help with Absolutely. that. It's, it's very neat to have it you know, in a book and that kids can so easily much, digest. There's so, and there's so much opportunity for kids. They, there's so many programs now that they're bringing yoga into the schools they to are. help them uh, help them understand their own emotional states and how that they can be in control. Um, which is, I think what we all need (laughs) sometimes of just knowing, knowing how, how to respond and to, to understand how to react more in a positive way. Definitely. And kind of back to the corporate setting, I think, you know, in, in the environment we're in today with businesses that trying to help employees is I think super great. It's going to increase productivity reduce anxiety. I mean, there's so many benefits to yoga. So I think just taking that aspect. break. I mean, every, t- every time I go in and teach in the corporate settings, it's, it's a, you know, I, I, it helps that I understand what it was like to be a, a, mm-hmm. a desk, a desk <laughs> dweller for as many years as I was. And knowing that just taking a few moments to, to get up and do a few simple stretches has just made, makes the difference. Um, then as, as people got to see me <laughs> as I was going through my, uh, yoga teacher training program, then I was, you know, I was just doing yoga everywhere at work, <laughs> <All> the time. <laughs> All, you know, standing at the copier mm-hmm. in the, in our little kitchen, kitchen space. Um, and people would come to me and say, Hey, something's going on. I need to, I need to stretch something here. I, I, you know, something isn't right. And, and we just kind of talk it through and try to release, you know, that low back tension that everyone always has from sitting too much and, and, and being hunched over at that desk. So, (laughs) yeah, I think taking yoga training, you kind of become the, the expert, whether you want to or not, (laughs) because it does require a lot of anatomy training. So you do learn a lot more about the body that you can, you're not a physician, of course, but you can help educate people on, okay, maybe do this, do that certain yoga moves and also you should knowing, do or should not do. And also knowing when to refer to a professional saying like, exactly. if you're, if, if you're it's experiencing, not in your yeah, mm-hmm. if you're experiencing pain and, and mm-hmm. tingling or numbness, like definitely go see, go see somebody <laughs> and get it taken care of. Definitely. Yeah. And it's just super great to share your passion for yoga with others. I know I'm, I'll be done with my training in a mm-hmm. week, which is really exciting. I was showing everybody and it was really interesting to see how, how well received it was actually. Yeah. So yeah. no, yeah, no, I've been, um, my family always looks forward to me coming <laughs> to say like, Hey, I've got this thing and I want to work on this. And, um, we've been talking about feet and taking care of and making our, our feet healthier because they're, okay. they're our foundation of like just learning how to roll your Alignment feet or anything. and just, just, just how to stretch your feet. Cause most people don't even think about that. So, um, that was actually a, a big request in okay. my family for the holiday. Yeah. Well, the, this, one of my sisters does a lot of walking as part of her job okay. and so just being on her feet so much um was just taking a toll so just needed to to know how to to tighten it tighten things up a little bit and think about how to move them a little differently that's good yeah or like rolling out your arches things like rolling that rolling out your arches yeah. learning how to to do that that true tadasana foot to actually build that strength so okay. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Rooting your feet into the ground. Exactly. <laughs> we won't exactly. get you yoga on you here, but. <laughs> exactly. So is there a specific event or experience in your life that kind of led you to where you are today? Um, it's a bunch of different things. Um, so, uh, 
I am a person who is more hypermobile, so I had instable joints from the time I was 10 years old. Um, things dislocating <laughs> wow. so that um, at the time they didn't really know what to do with the kid who had that. So they just said, well, we're just going to pull you out of gym class because if we don't have you jump or run, then you have less likely of the chance of doing that. Um, doctors now, and even when this happened with my nephews, like they changed the approach of just making the the person be a little bit more aware of how and, and knowing the limitations, understanding limitations. But at the time, it was something that was just always kind of there. And um, then we, you know, skip skip forward into into time, just trying to figure out how to make fitness work for my body because being a little bit more hypermobile, things aren't as stable, um, body's a little bit more uncomfortable and trying to find a way that fitness works for me. Um, and a friend said, hey, let's go to yoga class. And uh, that was 16 years ago. Wow, okay. <laughs> 16 years ago, mm-hmm. 17 years ago. Um, and yeah, so now I've been teaching for 15 years mm-hmm. And, um, that was going to those first couple of classes was, was the aha of like, wow, I can really make a difference in my body. And after two years of practicing, uh, consistently with that teacher, um, deciding that I wanted to be able to go through a teacher training program and bring it forward. And it was very different for me because, um, I'm actually very much an introvert, which most people are, are always surprised <laughs> when they meet me going, how is that possible? It's going, teaching actually helped bring bring me more forward m- making me appear more extroverted than i actually am so but also making me comfortable and confident because i just trusted the process of what yoga could do um and from there it just kind of snowballed and just wanting to 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 learn more i would i would say that even when i went through my teacher training program that I spent the next five years of reading nothing but yoga. Like there, <laughs> mm-hmm. yoga was everything, just trying to, to gain as much knowledge as I could, attending workshops, attending additional trainings and continuing that on. And then that just fed right into personal training because I wanted a little bit more, uh, a deeper aspect to it um, and learning how to take that. And then that led me to, to wellness coaching as well learning how to get behind the psychology of what's happening with people and how they can make change. Very cool. And I think a misconception about yoga, it's not actually an animate thing. It's a state of being. It's a mindset. It's a lifestyle. It's a, yes. So there's so much to there's learn so, about it. Right. That it's, that it's, it's more of a, a attitude and belief um, of how you can behave and be in the world. Yep. So. That's a very nicely said. <laughs> So what are some of your short-term and long-term goals to help improve wellness in women's lives? Um, so I'd like to, again, just trying to, to bring, bring yoga to different groups, um, getting that opportunity to get out there, um, sharing, sharing where I can, um, as much as possible, um, as well as trying to get the, those, get started with, uh, some more of the development of trying to build out this, this chair yoga program. Um, and I guess I kind of falls a little bit more into the long term of trying to get that out and about into the community. Um, just trying to help people in whatever aspect I can to make them live healthier lives. And sometimes in a group setting, it's more effective because you're, you know, helping many people at one time. So, you know, working with exactly. a company or a larger group versus, you know, one-on-one. So it's important to do both, both of course. But yeah, sometimes it's thinking about how you can have the greatest impact and the greatest number of people. Right, right. So, and and recognizing that I, I know that I need to be able to be out there more and offering more and just letting people know like, Hey, you can come, come find me at a variety of different (laughs) places around the city. And, uh, as well as I can come to you. So that's really great. Yeah. And I think just overall making yoga less intimidating. Absolutely. I'm trying Mm -hmm. to make it as accessible and not a scary thing, not a scary thing. And, Mm -hmm. and, uh, knowing that just, you know, even something simple as taking a few deep breaths can make a big difference. Exactly. And with the one-on-one work, I know I have like friends and family members that are too afraid to go to a yoga class with me. Like, oh, actually, can you show me some moves first and I'll feel better. Kind of, you know, like the sense of being a perfectionist or wanting to know what you're doing. Exactly. 
exactly. It's, even, I get that. So even the lingo. I mean, like I remember when I first first started <laughs> started teaching, mm-hmm. I created all these different handouts for people of just some basics. Like one was, you know, the the, the language that you're going to hear in a yoga class. Um, some teachers actually will give you Sanskrit names, which can be intimidating. Yeah, Sanskrit. Hold on, um, the thing. <laughs> but but having them even understand some of the terminology of what you know, opening the body and releasing the body and soften and, and those kind of things. Like, what does that really mean? So most people have just like, well, it's, it, you're speaking about another language. I don't understand yeah. what's going on. So mm-hmm. yeah, warrior one, two, three, it's like, okay, <laughs> and you have to just kind of watch everybody. So totally okay to be at the back of the room. So you can right, know what's coming right. up next. Yeah, yeah. Because some teachers will <laughs> model it for you. Some don't, some kind of walk around the room, provide adjustments. So again, every class is different. But yeah, I think it's just important to say, hey, it's not, it shouldn't be intimidating. Everybody gets it. There's people of all different levels at every single class I've been to pretty much. Absolutely. Beginners, more experienced. And the great thing is if you go to a class that a beginner could go to, you can incorporate your own moves into the flow. So the teacher might give direction on one move, but actually you're you're going to do- You're able to do what's right for your body in that moment. Mm -hmm. Or just rest in child's pose. Mm -hmm. You know, just- you know, take a rest on the mat. Yep. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) In child's pose, if some of you don't know what that is, you're basically spreading your knees wide, touching your toes together, sitting back into your heels, and then you're placing your arms out in front, resting your head on the floor or mat. So yeah, so you can kind of think of- It's a nice resting position. Yeah, you can kind of think of it like a- a, a different variation of a fetal position. Yeah. It's just a, a folded mm-hmm. over position for the body. Yeah. Or you can place your arms like along your side for that yep. type of move too. So nice. So yeah. <laughs> so we're not going to do a live yoga class here, but maybe we should next time. That could be fun. <laughs> we should do a yoga from your car, but that could maybe be dangerous. <laughs> If people are listening to podcasts on their commute. Uh, well, sure, sure. Uh, I mean, there's... Maybe that's not a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of what can you do in the times when you're waiting or stuck in traffic? Maybe like, if you're at a stoplight or at a stoplight, waiting. There's, yeah. definitely, there's definitely different things that you can do. <laughs> not when you're going 75 on the highway. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so definitely. So for um, kind of a complex question, answer whoever you like. Um, what does wellness mean to you? Wellness means... Um, making a commitment to yourself to be the best that you can be, um, in all aspects of your life. So thinking of everything from movement to sleep, to nutrition, to hydration, um, and definitely even considering your own self-talk too. So we, we tend to, st- to start putting up our own barriers of feeling as though you, you can't, you can't, the big thing can't do something when I mean like I was always told as a kid like well you 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 can't you can't run jump or skip <laughs> so <laughs> but uh yet I still do, do those things today because they're very important it's amazing, and yeah. knowing knowing how and knowing different ways to approach it and there's always another way to to make fitness work um and wellness work for your body so um and just trying to find that that happy healthy state and I think from your background going through that, that, you know, doctors might have said this and that and that you can't do these activities and you did it anyway. So I, think I did it anyway. I, did, yeah, I mean, so yeah, they, at the time I went, th- they put me through a knee surgery when I was in high school, um, specifically thinking that they were going to help tighten up the joint itself. Okay. Um, tighten the muscles around the joint and I can't actually tighten the joint. That would be great if you could actually tighten the joint. That would be, that would be amazing. Um, but, um, but then I had to learn how and how to change that. And even within yoga, um, being a person who's a little bit more hypermobile, I have to actually back off on what is possible so that I don't overstrain things. So for me, uh, yoga became more of a stability exercise versus where most people are looking to, to really stretch and really deepen. Um, I'm a little bit, a little bit different looking at it for how to, how to create stability and strength within the yoga practice. That's really cool. Have any individuals with a similar condition reached out to you? Um, not yet, but this okay. is something that I would love to be able to, yeah. to work with people. I, I actually do have quite a few people mm-hmm. that, uh, will come to classes and I'll give them different tips and ways to readjust how they're doing things with their shoulders, their elbows, um, thinking differently about their knees. So definitely there are, there are different ways to approach the yoga practice. And what is that condition called with the, the joints the um, So there's there's a bunch of different uh, levels or or types going on there. So uh, hyper hyper mobility 
uh, disorders. Uh, some of them are Eiler-Stanlow syndrome. Um, and years ago, I was very involved with uh, with a group in town as a support group, understanding what the condition was. And that's a genetic condition that's, that people may or may not have. Um, so just knowing that there is help if you feel like you're you, your shoulders and your joints just feel a little looser mm-hmm. than, than normal. There are other ways to help strengthen them through yoga and just strength training. Well, that's great to know. So if anybody listening yes. has those conditions, yes, that's, absolutely. you can definitely, you know, fight back and do yeah. yoga and many other activities. So, um, and it's something I never would have guessed that you had that condition. I mean, it's, no, yeah, no, you're doing great. And- so it must be helping. <laughs> the yoga. So it's definitely, it's, it's mm-hmm. uh, definitely been the, the glue that helps hold me together. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's kind of strengthening the muscles and yeah, learn, learning how to, how to hold the poses a little bit differently. Yeah. And everybody's different too. Some can, you know, are more flexible, can sink deeper into the pose. Some are not. And you'll notice too, like when you start yoga, you'll become much, much more flexible than you Absolutely. thought you could be. <laughs> so <laughs> somebody says, I'm not flexible. That's okay. You probably and, will be. <laughs> and and I also like to tell people, mm-hmm. I said, well, I can't do yoga because I'm not flexible. Well, that's like a chicken and the egg syndrome. You have to start practicing exactly. something to make it better. <laughs> yeah, <So. laughs> definitely. So what is one wellness ritual that you do daily or weekly that you'd encourage listeners to incorporate into their lives? I'm a big fan of having people just take uh, a, a few deep breaths. So finding a, a quiet, safe place, obviously not in your car, <laughs> <laughs> finding a quiet, safe place that you can sit. And that could be like at your desk. It could be um, when you first get up out of bed, um, just taking a moment to close your eyes and take a few deep breaths and trying to be present in the moment. And, uh, then also giving a sense of gratitude to that moment, to your day, um, knowing that, uh, those deep breaths are going to serve you well. And what is your personal mantra or theme song that kind of gets you going, brings you back to that good state of mind? It doesn't have to be a song. It can be, you know, a saying you tell yourself. Um, I, it was funny because uh, I had actually, when you had sent me some of these questions uh, prior to this session, um, I had Googled up the the phrase that uh, Gandhi always gets uh, associated with of be the change you wish to see in the world. Um, and then I found someone who kind of debunked that he never actually said that phrase. But oh, okay. <laughs> so the, 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 the real quote goes on much longer and we can definitely share it so that you'll, you'll have it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's more about how you're recognizing the the change that you can have and how you impact others around you by, by being more mindful and more conscious of yourself, um, which is something true that we should be working on anyway. Um, so that one is always stuck with me is like, how can I be again, coming back to being a, that better person um, every day and every moment that I can um, helping people and, and, taking care of people as, mm-hmm. as I can through wellness and fitness. So, yeah, that's really great. It's something you're naturally doing with your profession. So. Right. And mm-hmm. it's, I mean, it's been something that I didn't realize that I had been doing like most of, most of my, <laughs> most of my <laughs> just life, naturally, just kind of yeah. naturally mm-hmm. doing that. So, and people coming to you for help. So always, perfect fit. <laughs> always, always. Yeah, no. And then, then on the, on the fun side, um, I'm a big fan of the, uh, movie Rocky horror picture show. And there's, uh, a song in there that's a don't dream it, be it. And that is one that's always been with me. So it's like turn up the volume and (laughs) yeah, if you can, if you can dream it, you can try to be it. So it's very true. Dream big. Yes. (laughs) Set your intentions high. (laughs) Yeah. I was at like a, a session kind of, um, goal setting and it talked about three different levels of, of goals. So basically you have the, the first circle is, Things that you just do naturally. Yep, you know, you're going to get done. You have to get done. The second bubble would be things that are going to take a bit of work, but you're pretty confident you can do it. The third level would be things that are kind of outrageous and may make you laugh, but they're super high goals, but you should write them down anyways. Right. So it's kind of neat to look at different levels of it. Nice, nice. Yeah, yourself. I mean, I think that's that's kind of what happened this year of just that, that for me, trying to think bigger. How, how can I make a bigger impact and help more people? So. Very great. So are there any books or resources you'd recommend for listeners? 
Um, I tend to, to lean more towards the entrepreneurial mindset in a lot of what I'm doing of like, how can, how can I, how can I make and, uh, and do things a little bit more efficiently. So, um, I've really gotten into books like essentialism of how to, to really strip back to the life that you want to lead and to find your true purpose. Um, thinking about things like, well, uh, wellpreneur, um, being a, a wellness provider, how can you approach your business differently of, of bringing that forward? Um, and let's see, um, the newest one that I'm reading right now is the, the secrets of the millionaire mind. So that one's been a, <laughs> been a okay. lot of fun, but again, it's just coming down to really defining your goals, like truly defining your goals and, and, creating those small steps of how you're going to achieve them. And how can listeners reach you? Um, well, they can find me teaching classes at In Vivo Wellness. I'm there five days a week, some yoga classes, some fitness classes. Um, you can also check me out on my website, which is synergy-wellness.com. And in case you're not sure how to spell synergy, I'll, that, have, it the, the <laughs> I'll have it in the notes. I'll have it in the notes. And also I'm out on uh, Facebook and just getting started on doing more things on Instagram. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn. So um, I'm a big, big believer in networking and helping other people. So if I am not the right resource, I'm usually tell people like connect to me because I will try to help you find someone that's going to help you open the doors to whatever you're you're trying to achieve. So that's great. Well, I appreciate your time so much today. It's been really fun. Yes, um, it has been. Thank so you so thanks much. Thanks everybody for listening and have a great day. Thanks. I look into your